Hello and thank you for joining me. I'm Heather Forgan of stampwithnelly.com. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in the UK. Today I want to show you this box that I have made, which contains, it's just a normal lidded box, kind of tight lid, um, but it contains the cards that I made on my last video using the Eden's Garden Bundle and some envelopes to go with it. So there's four cards in that colour scheme and then I had four cards in this colour scheme and all of that is using the neutrals card and ink. So my box is a nice fit for the envelopes. If I use a white one, you'll see that it is a little bit larger than the um, envelopes themselves, just to make it a little bit easier to get them in and out. So when I was designing this box, let me get rid of those for the moment. I took my envelope and I measured it. So you can't see the measurement at the bottom of my screen here, but it is six and three eighths by four and just under a half. Uh, should we say four and three eighths as well? So I decided that I wanted to make the base of my box six and a half. No, I didn't. I did decided to go for six and three quarters by four and three quarters. Okay. So I also wanted it to be an inch deep so that I could get at least eight cards and envelopes in there. Okay. Like so. There's plenty of room there. I could put another one in or I could put some tissue paper in or something like that. So I know that I've got six and three quarters and I need an inch either end of that. So my card for the base needs to be eight and three quarter inches long. And this measurement I said was four and three quarters. So I needed to add an inch on that side and an inch on that side. So I've got six and three quarters. Okay, so that's how I worked out the size of the card for my base. All I want to do on that is bring in my trimmer and score that at one inch. Move that out of the way so it's flat. So I'm just lining that up at one inch and I'm taking the scoring, the, the uh, lighter one, score that, turn it around, line it up again at one inch, score that, line it again, one inch, score, and finally one inch and score that. Okay, so I've got my four score lines that intersect an inch in from the corners there. Now, for the lid, I want to do the same measurements. So my shortest measurement was six and three quarters. Okay, so that's six and three quarters there, but I want to add on one little notch. So it's a sixteenth. So that smallest line there, um, that's where I want to go to. Okay, and then cut that. 
and then my longer length was eight and three quarters. So I've lined it up at eight and three quarters and then I just want to move it one notch along. Okay. So I'm just adding a sixteenth in each direction for my card base. And again, I just want to score that. So I'll get that cutting blade out the way again at one inch. on all four sides and that will mean that my lid is just a fraction larger than my base and should fit over snugly. The construction of the base and the lid, it's exactly the same. So I will do the base first. Gosh, I've obviously got glue or something all over my phone folder that needs a clean. I think this happens at, at Christmas crafting times is not quite so diligent about cleaning up all of my tools um, but I'm just about finished all of my Christmas crafting so I um, started the craft room cleanup last night cleaned my scissors but I forgot my bone folder I'll do that after I film this so all I'm doing is just mitering in these two tabs at the end there so just cutting straight up that score line and then just chopping a little bit off either side um someone at a class a while back described that as making it into a plant pot whatever <laughs> if that helps you remember how to do it no problem with me. So I'm just creating that plant pot. Didn't quite get to the end there. Yeah, that too. Adding glue to each of these tabs. Oh, I forgot a stage. Nearly. I added a thumb notch onto here. Now, confession time. I saw someone using the snowman punch, which is still current, to do that. But I went a bit too far and I cut out part of his hat as well on there. On this side, I did it properly. Um, so you have to be very careful. Do it on this one. You have to be very careful that you don't get his carrot nose or his hat or anything else. Just that bit there. Okay. So again, watching that you've not got any of that bit there. Then if you don't have a circle punch, but you do have the snowman punch, or if you'd like the snowman punch, um, you can obviously still purchase that then you can get your thumb notches there i normally just use my half inch circle punch which has sadly retired but any small circle punch would do the trick so before that glue sits just fold that in and get a nice neat angle on there okay same on that side Nice, neat join. Apologies, I've got ink on my fingers already because I've done some of the stamping ahead of time. Because today is really just about the box to give those eight cards. So the envelopes that I measured the base on are um, stamping up 
envelopes. So you can purchase them from my shop as well. And I tend to make most of my cards, but not all of my cards, to fit those envelopes. We call them C6 envelopes in the UK. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I just realised I've, I've snipped and put the thumb holes on the bottom of the box instead of the top. Honestly, it's going to be one of those days. No harm. You can have thumb notches whenever you like them. I will also do them correctly on this lid. I'll do that before we assemble. So another chance to see whether I can get this right. So roughly in the middle. Not got any of the blue card showing through those other bits. Although clearly I did. Ah, la, la. Right, so let's show, take it a little bit further back. Make that better, 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 better. It's still easier to use a circle punch. <laughs> Got a tiny little bit snagged there. So, same again, just chopping these corners out. So, I will fast forward. Okay, so we're ready to assemble that. And this is a trick from my friend Jez. So if you assemble your lid around your base like this, then you know it's going to fit. Genius, isn't it? Such a clever lady. So add some glue and bring that round like so. Add some glue to that tab. Bring that around. So keeping that in there. We've got that. So we've got the extra little bit of card And when we cut the top a sixteenth larger and also Jez's little tip to build the lid around the base of your box and then that way you know it's not going to be too tight okay now I made my First one, a bit tight. And this one is a lot better. So it's not going to fall off unless you give it a real good shake like that. But it is a nice tight fit. So just placing those corners back down again. Just I noticed that one of them had lifted a little bit there. Okay, so ready to decorate. On this one, I used um, Mary Merlot, Early Espresso, Crumb Cake, and I think Sahara Sand, because I haven't used Sahara Sand in my cards, and I thought it felt a little bit left out. So this time I've already gone ahead and done the stamping, um, or most of the stamping. Using the Eden's Garden stamp set, um, that lovely big image there in Night of Navy and some of these ones in Basic Grey, Smoky Slate and Grey Granite. Um, that's what I've used on that. Now, I'm going to use this stamp, but I don't want hello there. I just want hello. OK, so to do that, I've already mounted my stamp and covered it with something. <laughs> no, I haven't found it, found it. So I've mounted my stamp 
what I'm going to do is take a piece of masking tape and I'm going to cover up the word I don't want. Now, depending on the font of the stamp that you're using, you may need to use more than one piece of tape to fully cover that. I've got my Knight of Navy ink pad. Because I don't want to have lots of ink all over my tape, I'm just going to do it at the edge like that. I'm quite happy that I've covered the whole of the hello. Take the tape off and put it somewhere you're not going to put your fingers on. And just gently peel that off. Now I do have ink on the top edge there. That shouldn't matter if I don't press too hard. So bring that in. And I just want to add it up in that corner there. Lovely. Okay, so it's another way to get more out of your stamps. Um, if you don't want to use a full sentiment, you can mask part of it off. And I'm going to add a little bit of ribbon onto the back of this with some tearing tape. So I can use my grid mat to make sure my ribbon is straight. I'll bring it down a bit. Like so. Easier. So again, just making sure that my ribbon's straight. Fairly tight, but not too tight to pull the card. Okay, so I've got my little piece of ribbon on there. I can then just add this to my box lid. Might as well use the tearing tape, take the back and off. like so. Now, little cheat. Take another piece of the ribbon and tie that in a knot wherever you want it. Trim the ends off that. And if you want, you can add a little glue dot underneath that just to keep that in place. Let's just do that too. there and it helps that tail slide down, lie down neatly there as well. So now I need to make another eight cards to put in this box to gift to someone as well. I think that's a lovely little gift, um, especially as the sentiments on these were all um, Dear friend, how are you? Sending hugs and hello there. So nice general, um, let's just keep in touch type of 
sentiments on there. And I've got two boxes I can gift to two friends once I have made more cards to put in this one. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you're new to my channel, please do click on that subscribe button. And if you um, would like to get the measurements um, for and links to all of the products that I've used for both of these boxes, then please do click on the description bar below. You'll get a link to my blog post and all of the details will be there. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, take care. Bye.